Okay, so again, today we we're looking at zip forms, using templates and going into DocuSign Rooms. And if you do not ha yet have zip forms set up with a username and password. So that means that when you go to zip forms, you do not log in with your um, NAR credentials. You log in, hey Lisa and Susan, you log in with your zip forms, username and password, okay? So you do have to have that in place. If you do not have that in place and you don't feel comfortable doing it, reach out to me and we can schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. But also on my website under downloadable resources. So again, that's up here in the upper corner under downloadable resources. You can find the zip forms, templates and DocuSign rooms directions. So initial zip form setup is what you need to be looking at, okay? So I just wanna make that disclosure. All right, so that being said, once we go into zip forms, which is zipformplus.com, no S, zipformplus.com, we are going to set up templates. Everybody loves a template. <laughs> so once we get in here, and you can see I have a username and password. So I'm not using this blue sign in with your NAR Realtor credentials. We actually have a zip form account because we have to connect that in DocuSign. And those um, directions show you exactly how to do that. If you cannot figure it out, don't stress, just reach out to me and I will try to help you get connected, okay? So this is zip forms. Once you're in here, the first thing that you're gonna do is go to templates. So up on your navy blue bar, you're going to go to templates. And you can see I have several set up from where I've done different classes, but I'm gonna quickly walk through how to set one up. So we're gonna click the new button below our navy blue bar in our templates. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a new offer to purchase template. So this is Monica's buyer template on 1-22-21. So when our new forms come out in July, you will have to redo your templates. So anybody that used to use dot loop, same thing. Once we get the new forms, we have to set up our templates to accommodate for any changes that the North Carolina Association of Realtors made to our forms, okay? So we're doing a buyer's template. It's a residential property. I'm going to click save. And this template will get applied to each and every transaction that you do if you choose it. Okay, so now that we're here, you can see it says there are no documents to display. So in the upper right corner where it says all forms, we're going to expand that out. We're gonna go ahead and look for working with real estate agents. Oops, sorry, I shouldn't have clicked there, there we go. So you wanna make sure that you have the one that says buyer. So if you see 160, working with real estate agents and at the end it says buyer. So that's the one I'm going to choose. And now I'm going to look for my buyer agency agreement from this year, the 201 buyer agency agreement and choose that one. You can also bring in your offer to purchase, which is here. And any other forms that you use quite a bit. So if you do like a lot of FHA, VA, you could bring that in, right? And so keep in mind, this is your template. So when I open up working with real estate agents, I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna put in my name and my license number, like so, my firm name. not the date, right? The date would be specific to my transaction. And this is a template 
that I'm going to use for all transactions. So I don't know who my buyer or sellers are going to be, but it did bring in the company name, my name, and my license. I'm going to click save in the upper left. And then I'm going to click the back button in the upper left. I'm going to let that go back a step. And now I'm going to open my buyer agency agreement and do the same thing. So you see it already brought in the firm. Okay. The contract is with the firm. If I wanted to set one of these up for land and I wanted to set one of these up for new construction and I wanted to set one of these up for residential, then I could do that. Um, that for this example, we're just setting one up that's for, you know, everyday use. So I'm only going to fill in and check boxes that will always apply, right? So if I don't do any land and I don't do any commercial, then I might want to choose that residential box because then later I don't have to think about it. You do not have to choose it because you can choose it in a later step for each individual transaction if you so choose. We don't have any terms. Um, if you're somebody who adjusts their compensation, you might not want to fill that in. I'm not one to usually do that. So I go ahead and put resale, 3% of purchase price, we're all independent contractors. So whatever we do, that is up to us. So I'm gonna say new construction, 2.5% of purchase price. Land, 5% of purchase price. So that is how I choose to set my forms up. The way you set them up is up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this for use later down the form. And you can change that later, right? If you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this volume down. My apologies for that. I thought I had already done that. There we go. And so I'm a 60 dayer here. Whatever your days are, that is totally up to you. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in because it applies every time. I always give samples. So I'm going to go ahead and check these so I don't have to remember to do it later. I don't take any compensation back on home warranty, but you can see if I try to type none, that doesn't work. So just remember in zip forms, if you want to type something that the box is not necessarily formatted to type, if you hit the space bar, it turns green and I can put in something like zero because I, I don't ever take money off of a home warranty. I don't know if there will be any additional provisions on mine. Now, here under dual agency, I can paste what I had above and double it. So if it's the firm, 6%, 5% on new construction and 10% on land. That's what we're expecting to get as compensation, okay? So however you choose to fill that in or whatever your broker in charge is comfortable with, that is what you're wanting to do there, okay? And so then down here at the bottom, you'll see it did bring in my firm name. I can go ahead and put in my firm's license number. That doesn't change for me normally. I'm gonna put in my firm's phone number or if you just wanna put your own, that's fine. It's got my name here. I can go ahead and pop in my license number, my phone number, and my email, okay? So now I'm at the end of my buyer agency template. Again, upper left, save, and go back. Now I can do the same with my offer to purchase. I'm not going to continue to beat a dead horse here, but you get the point. You're going to go through and the things that don't change, you can go ahead and fill them in, right? Anything that is property specific or client specific, we don't know the answers yet because this is a blanketed template that is going to go across all forms and all transactions. So we don't know the answers to any of these things at the moment, right? 
So what we do want to have filled in is this stuff down here at the bottom, which you can see a lot of it came in. And really, I don't know if I'm going to be a buyer's agent or a dual agent because we list so much property that there's a great chance that I might be in dual agency. So I'm actually not going to check that. Um, so my license number is there. My phone number is there. My email is there. So that is and my firm license number. So that's all I need. So that looks great. Didn't even have to type anything in that one. Right. So you get the point. All your forms, you just open them up, and if there's anything that you need to fill in, then you can fill it in here and save it for our templates, okay? Everybody feel comfortable there, feeling good about templates. We're going to set them up for a listing. We're going to set them up for our buyers. Um, everybody good there? Can I get a thumbs up or a yes? Okay, cool. So... How do we use this with DocuSign? Okay, we're gonna do what we always do. We're going to go into command on our computer. We're going to make sure that we have our clients added as contacts. I've already done that. I'm going to create my opportunity as per usual. So I'm here in my opportunities. I'm going to create an opportunity in the upper right. If you're on a team, make sure your team is selected right here. If you're acting as an individual agent, you won't have that. So for this instance, we're gonna do a buyer. So my opportunity type is buyer. I'm the owner of the opportunity and who is my client? I'm gonna pick my client. If I have a co-buyer, I can pick my co-buyer here. This is my opportunity name. And that is going to be useful here in a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually put a date in here for myself because I use this a lot. And I'm actually going to copy this to my clipboard again. I can fill in any pertinent information here, 3% commission, for example. And these folks are ready to make an offer. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that they are active and negotiating, okay? So we're gonna make an offer. I'm going to create my opportunity. I can fill in any details here that I need. Move over to my documents tab, like I always do. I'm going to pick my checklist type on the left. In this instance, we're making an offer on a residential property. Okay. And so in Winston-Salem, under consultation, you guys have working with real estate agents in the buyer agency. If this was a Greensboro Market Center checklist, you guys do not have any documents under consultation. They are all in the under contract folder. So when you first open this, you will not see these two documents there. I just wanted to make that known. So now that we have added our contacts, created our opportunities, we have templates set up over in zip forms. Okay, we're going to start a transaction in the upper right corner and go to DocuSign. And once we log into DocuSign, I was already in there, so I was already logged in. You guys would need to log in. You're going to see that my DocuSign room has the same name as the opportunity that I had in command, right? Dakota Perry Buyer 122 2021. Dakota Perry Buyer 122 2021. It's named the same thing because they're linked together. Okay. So from here, when we go to our blue add button in the upper right corner, where we normally would have picked DocuSign forms, we are now going to select zip forms. At that point, if you do not have zip forms connected to DocuSign, it is going to ask you to log in with your zip forms, username, and password. So again, if you don't have a zip forms, username, and password, reference these directions on how to do it. And if you need help, reach out and let me know. 
Okay, I'm actually going to click share and wait for this link. And I'm going to pop this link into our chat box. So if you guys just want to go straight there, you can. There's the link to those directions in the chat. All right. So again, we would pick zip forms. It's going to ask us to log into zip forms. Okay. Now, you have two ways that you can go about this. In my opinion, the easier of the two for the use of templates is now that you have templates set up in zip forms, you have everything connected, you're gonna do what you've always done in command. You're gonna get it to this point where you're in your DocuSign room that is linked to command. You are then going to go into your zip forms account, okay? We're going to be under our transactions. So on the bar, on the navy blue bar, we want to make sure that transactions is highlighted in green, not templates. We're going to click the new button right here in the upper left. I'm going to say new transaction. This one is an offer to purchase. I'm going to paste that name. I forgot I copied that. Let me delete that. So the same name so that there's no confusion. This Dakota Perry dash buyer 122-2021. I'm going to name my transaction in zip forms the same thing so that there's no question on which one it is when I go to get my documents. Okay. I'm going to choose residential for this example. And now I can apply my templates right? So you'll have your listing package, your buyer package, etc. I'm going to pick my buyer package and I'm going to click save. That is going to open up my transaction to a summary page. So at this point, if I want to go ahead and pop in everything for my transaction, in Winston-Salem, there we go, that I can do so, right? It's just like an autofill. Offer dates, expiration dates, all that kind of fun stuff. In the interest of time, I just wanted to let you guys see we are under the summary. So we're in our transaction. We applied our buyer template. It opens up the transaction to our summary. And now I'm going to move over to the parties. So you can see that it knows, I don't know why it made me buy one. Um, you can see that it knows that I'm the selling agent and broker. I'm actually gonna edit this because I'm not, I think it's because I hit an autofill. Let me get that out of there. <laughs> there we go. So it knows I'm the selling agent and broker. And so now if I click on buyer one was Dakota, right? I'm going to come down to the bottom and click save. Buyer two, I'm going to select from the left, is Sasha. I'm going to go to the bottom and hit save. So now it has buyer one, buyer two, and me, the selling agent broker, under the parties. So now once I move to my documents, you're going to see everything from my templates moved in right here, right? So when I open my working with real estate agents brochure, it was from my template. It already has all of my data in there. Oops, somebody's in the waiting room. Sorry, Ediana, I just saw you there. Hey, Tanya, I'm gonna make you um, a co-host if you don't mind. And if you see anybody else pop into the waiting room, will you please let them in? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate you. So now that we're within our transaction, you can see it filled in my form, but now I'm in a specific transaction, so I can actually pick the date here. Google's in my way right now. Normally you can click the calendar, but it's just being Google and wanting to fill it in for me. So I'm just going to say 01. There we go. So now I can click the date. 
because this is for a specific transaction. Now, since I put my people under parties, it popped them in where they go and it still has my stuff for my templates. So I'm looking good. I can click back in the upper left, open up my buyer agency agreement, which was also from a template. So you can see it did bring Dakota and Sasha in from my parties. I can click here and choose today's date if today is when we are in fact going to be signing. All of the stuff that I always fill in on my agreements is there from my templates, right? So if it's beginning today, and then when is it going to expire? This is one of the fields that keeps deleting out of DocuSign, if you guys didn't know. So that doesn't happen here, which is great. And so then I would just go through and complete the rest of my buyer agency agreement. You can see my checks that I've put in my template are still there. Any additional provisions for this specific transaction, right? And there's my other stuff that I had saved in my template. So I don't have to fill any of that in. It's got my buyers here. I can fill in their things if I want to. There's all of my data that was in my template. So that looks good to me. I'm going to click back. And here's my templated offer to purchase. Okay. So I can put, you know, John Smith and Jane Smith are my sellers. My buyers are Dakota and Sasha Perry. Fill in my offer just like I always would, right? Nothing different here. What's my due diligence fee? What's my earnest money fee? Right, it's doing my math. Who's my attorney? It's gonna work, work our way through and fill it out just like we always would, right? Nothing new here. It, the only difference is that we're in zip forms instead of DocuSign filling these forms in. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop there. You get the point, you're gonna fill in your offer. Is everybody with me? We're good? Awesome, okay. So now that we've done this, we're gonna bring it all back together. So in our DocuSign room that we already have, we're going to add documents from zip forms. It's going to show me my available transactions that I have going in zip forms. This is the one from today. That's why it's important to name it something that you're gonna know, right? So I'm gonna select that one. I'm going to link them together. Says it was successful. Great. So now where am I going to pull in my forms? I'm gonna pull them in from my linked transaction. The transaction I just connected is where I wanna bring my forms in. So you're going to see that it's all the forms that I just had. They're all filled in as far as text goes. I've already done that in zip forms. I'm going to click add and it's going to pull them in to my DocuSign room. And they're all filled in. So I need to get my working with real estate agents, my buyer agency, and my offer signed. I can worry about pro services later. So I've selected the three that I want to get signed. And this part looks pretty much like what I've always taught you in DocuSign. I'm gonna click my pen. It's going to create an envelope. Give it a second to do that. We want to make sure that we rename this. This was the Perry offer on 123 Main. Something that we're gonna know what's inside of the envelope. I can actually, I can't stand documents to be out of order, y'all. It bothers me. So I'm gonna pick up this working with real estate agents and slide it to the left where it belongs. So it's working with real estate agents, buyer agency agreement, offer to purchase. Now they are in order. Always, always, always 
pre-tagged roles. We're adding recipients from pre-tagged roles. That is not changed. Do not pick room participants. Pick pre-tagged roles, okay? That box pops up. Who is buyer one on the buyer agency agreement? Dakota. Who is buyer two on the buyer agency agreement? Sasha. Who is the selling agent on the buyer agency agreement? I am. We don't have a buyer company representative. We don't have seller one or seller two signing. We don't have a listing agent that's signing. Only the three of us are signing. So I'm going to add the selected folks to the envelope. At this point, if we wanted to reorder these, like if I'm gonna sign first and then Sasha second and Dakota third, we can reorder them by changing this number. If it, everybody is a one, we're all going to receive simultaneously and everyone has their chance to sign. And once everyone signs, then everyone gets a final copy of the documents with all the signatures, okay? All right, so then we can type our email at the bottom. So excited to make this offer for you, whatever you need to say there. And we're going to click the next button in the upper right corner. It is going to take us into our envelope preview. And you can see because we use pre-tagged roles, on the right hand side, we can see who is signing what in our little preview pane, right? There are a few actions that we need to take here. So you see in the upper left hand corner that Dakota is yellow. He is our first buyer. And you see that Sasha is blue. She is our second buyer. I am purple. I am the buyer's agent. Those are our colors for our signatures. So in our preview pane on the right, you can see who signs what on each document. So this is the working with real estate agents, page one through four, our buyer agency agreement, all three are signing every page. On the offer, the buyer's agent doesn't sign. So it's only yellow and blue, right? So now here are our actions we need to take. As we slide down on this working with real estate agents, when showing this property, we're representing the seller. These are my buyers, y'all. So this does not apply. I do not need to sign this. So I'm actually going to click it. And I can either click delete on the right-hand corner lower corner, or I can click delete on my keyboard. I'm not signing disclosing seller sub agency, right? So I don't need that box there. Same thing here. They are not signing disclosing seller sub agency. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those because that will just confuse somebody. If it was that we needed that sign, then you could let them sign it, right? But we don't need to. Buyer agency agreement. It's all filled in nice and neat. You can see nothing deleted, which was great because I know that has been an issue. So everything is still there. Dakota signs, Sasha signs, I sign. Page four of buyer agency agreement. Page four. DocuSign does not know if your client said, yes, dual agency is just fine with us. It doesn't know, right? So same thing if we've already had that discussion, hopefully, with our clients. We're going to pick Dakota's signature next to dual agency and make it required on the right-hand side. Then we're going to pick Sasha's and make it required. Then we're going to get rid of the extraneous boxes. And I'm going to show you why, before I make any changes, I want to show you why that is so important. A lot of real estate agents in here, a lot of high Ds in the room, probably. When I sign stuff, I'm not going to lie, I don't read it. I know it's terrible industry. I just don't. So this is what it looks like when my buyer one signs. All right, I'm in his preview. So if you missed that, 
Up in the upper right corner, there is a recipient preview. You can see what it looks like on a computer, a tablet. Come on, spinning wheel. Let's do your thing. It's being really slow, sorry. Come on. Tablet, phone, okay? So this is what they look like in the different formats when somebody is signing it. This actually got upgraded recently the way this looks. That's what it looks like in all the different formats, okay? And you can actually interact with this preview. So I'm gonna pretend that I'm Dakota. Dakota gets it, he opens the email, he clicks start. It takes him to that page of straight to his signature on working with real estate agents. He's like, okay, sign. Takes him straight to the bottom of page one of the buyer agency agreement. Initial, page two, initial. This is how I sign stuff, not gonna lie. Now, high C's, they're probably gonna be scrolling, right? They're gonna be scrolling and reading, which is also fine then they might see it. But when I sign page three, whoop, it skipped me right over those. None of them are required, so it's not gonna take me to it. Me, the high D is gonna skip right by it. I'm not even gonna see it. I'm gonna keep, go, keep on clicking. I'll never know it was there, right? High C's of the world, they're gonna be reading every single line. They're gonna get there and see three boxes and go, huh? I don't know what I'm supposed to sign here. And they're gonna do one of two things, sign them all, wrong, or not sign it at all, wrong. We don't want that, right? So I'm gonna come out of the preview. We're going to say, my people said dual agency was a-okay. I'm gonna take Dakota's, required. Sasha's, required. Then I'm gonna get rid of these extraneous boxes. This also applies to page, 10 of the listing agreement, 10, 10 or 11 with the update. It's one of those two pages, same thing, dual agency, okay? So now that I've made the dual agency required, which we discussed and they agreed to, and I go to my recipient preview as Dakota, now it looks like this, start, initial, initial, here's page three, initial, boom, straight to dual agency good deal, and then it takes me on through doc, right? That's what we want. We don't want them to skip over that. So now we've taken that action. I'm just gonna scroll through to make sure everything looks good, <clears throat> right? So there we go. All looks good, buyer's initials, buyer's initials. I've already filled all my stuff out in zip forms. Looks great, use my templates and I'm gonna send it off in the upper right, okay? So zip form templates, the way to go right now. Yes, DocuSign is getting templates. It's going to look something like, I wish I had an actual like picture for you, I do not. But when we're in our room, um, you can see, under documents, usually we used to just add from DocuSign forms, right? We picked the DocuSign form, we picked group, and then we picked our offices group. I'm in two offices, so I see two separate sets here, but I'm gonna stick with the Winston-Salem trend here. KWRE buyer forms. And so there were my buyer forms, right? What the new DocuSign is going to look like when it upgrades is on this side of these forms. If I've set up templates, I'll be able to choose the working with real estate agents. And there's a drop down, and I can pick Monica's template, and it'll have all my stuff filled in. Offer to purchase Monica's template, and it'll have all my stuff filled in. And I'll add those to the room. I do not have a date. Nobody's going to make us any promises. It's, I know it's coming. The one thing that did get added here that is new as of yesterday, teams. 
we used to have the problem that if our admin was in their account and they started the document and then the rainmaker came in and needed to change the document rainmaker couldn't edit the rainmaker started the documents the admin comes in and needs to edit admin can't edit you have to log into the other person's account now under people okay you would already have your team in there if you had assigned them in the opportunity um i don't have anybody in here so i can invite i'm going to use pete because i know his email um, off the top of my head. They ha it has to be the email that they use to make their DocuSign, their Keller Williams DocuSign account, okay? It can't be somebody outside. They have to have a Keller Williams DocuSign account. And Pete does, so he's showing up, okay? So I could actually invite Pete into this room and I would want him to be an agent owner, okay? and I would invite him in. Now that part's done. If you were on a team and you had already assigned it, the people would already be inside of the room. So now I can go to Pete's three docs and share form editing capability with the person in the room. So when I click that, only this room, right? And then save. Now, if I start a document, and then Pete has to come in later to adjust the document. He can from his own account. He doesn't have to go into mine. So as of yesterday afternoon for our teams, that is our newest update, okay? Which I'm hoping means our templates are kind of close behind because originally they were supposed to release at the same time. Good? Okay, last thing, listing paperwork. I highly recommend that you do not make templates for anything except for your working with real estate agents and your listing agreement in zip forms, okay? Because if you make it in zip forms, the capability of DocuSign rooms to put all those little boxes in to your property disclosure for your clients to fill out, gone doesn't exist. So if you pull the form in from zip forms, I'll show you. I can, you can still pull stuff in. It doesn't have to be from the link transaction. I can just go to the zip forms library and it's just really, really long, but that's okay. Residential. Property disclosure statement right here. So you can see when I add this from zip forms, I know this was a buyer. I just wanted to show you guys what I mean. Um, if I'm going to get this signed from zip forms and I go to click my pen, I make my envelope. And I add my recipients from pre-tag rolls. I'm just going to make Dakota seller one and Sasha seller two. Add selected next to my preview. Watch what happens. Their signatures are there, right? Dates, cool deal, cool deal. Nothing, no fields, no clickables, nada, right? That is not cool. We don't want that. That's why do not put those disclosures in your zip form template, just your listing agreement and working with real estate agents. Because when we add it from DocuSign, did I miss it? Right here. And we make this one into an envelope.
Same thing, recipients, pre-tagged roles, seller one, Dakota, seller two, Sasha, add. And then we go next. There we go. Same thing, signatures and dates are there. But when we get to here, all that yellow, all those boxers are there. That means Dakota, who is yellow, is the one responsible for answering all those questions, right? Um, Sasha will not see any of these. So you can see same thing, very explicit directions. If you're gonna let your folks sign this residential property disclosure, electronically, either pull them into a Zoom with you, Zoom's free, right? Up to 30 minutes, I think 30 or 45 minutes, you can have a free Zoom with somebody. They can share their screen, you can walk them through it or give them very explicit instructions or give it to them in person, okay? Because same thing, none of this stuff is required. His signatures are required, but none of these questions. So he will see start, sign and it's going to take them all the way to the bottom so you have to make sure that you tell him make sure that you go in and type your answers and choose your boxes before you initial the bottom of page two scroll to page three make sure that you answer all of the questions before you sign right so, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. You just need to tell them what tell them what to do because a lot of people will send this disclosure off, the signatures come back and the disclosure's empty. And again, not what we want, right? So, how's everybody feeling? I know it's a lot. Yes, this is recorded. Yes, it's gonna be available to you. Um, don't forget about the directions that kind of take you through it because not only does it show you how to get it connected in the first place to zip forms, um, but it takes you through and shows you how to set up your templates, how to set up your transaction in zip form, how to connect it to DocuSign in case you haven't already, right? It shows you all the steps and how to put it all together. And then I even gave you some important notes at the end, um, I don't like holding two hour classes because I think they're too long, but I have found a way to do all of this on your phone. It is not easy. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, it's easy for me, but I'm the technology person, right? I mean, um, it's a very, it's higher level. It can be done. I mean, to me, it's not that bad, but I know that some people would probably, their eyes would glaze over and they would look at me like I was crazy. Um, but in order to do it from your phone with zip forms, you do have to have zip forms mobile. Um, it's $12.88 a year, and that is starting in July, right? So right now it's prorated. So it was like seven bucks um, to get it. Um, but you have to use a combination of things to get, to get this done on your phone. And you can even make it do in-person signing on your phone. Um, if you guys want to learn how to do it, I can have a higher level class and just fully disclose that, you know, if, if you want to try it, that you can come. <laughs> but um, you cannot open the zip forms on your phone without the zip form mobile. If you go into the DocuSign rooms on your phone yeah. and you've pulled something in from zip forms and you try to open it, it says you have to have zip forms mobile to open this form. Okay. Um, <clears throat> But if that's something you guys would want to see, I mean, I can show you. I keep hoping that the templates are going to come out in DocuSign Rooms because DocuSign Rooms, you can do it on your phone. Um, but it's, you know, their end game is for us to be able to easily do stuff on our phone. That's what they're working towards. There was just no really product available that did everything we needed it to do easily. So they're having to build it out. Okay, how are we feeling? Good? Good. Good, all right. So, um, 
that's pretty much it. And right on time, 145. If you guys have any questions or you want to see something done, um, now's the time to ask. I have one question, Monica. Yes, sir. Uh, the signature box or the initial box, mm -hmm. when I put those, transfer those over, they turn out to be so small you can't read them and I can't change the size of them. How do when I do When you transfer that? them over from where, honey? Well, when I reach over and pull them and drag them over. When you pull one in? Yes. Gotcha. So let's look at that. So if I pull, and the reason I'm sure that Pete is asking is because if you are getting, say you're signing an offer and you need to get the disclosures out of Triad MLS and upload them, you can go more. This is in my envelope where I'm getting signatures. You can upload those disclosures from your computer and I'm just gonna pull some random M uh, PDF in here. Like that one. And so you see the PDF symbol in the center. And then when I go to next, we're gonna pretend that's a disclosure that I need to drag and drop my buyer's initials, date, signatures onto. So there's my form. And you can do a combination of both things, right? Do your form and you can do a PDF. You could do zip forms and a DocuSign form and a PDF. So you can combine things. So we're just gonna pretend this is a disclosure and I need to pull over initials. So when you first pull them over, they're pretty big. You can make them little and then that's the biggest you can make it, Pete. Mine has gotten to the point I can't even read it. It's not nearly as large as it's showing up right there. Do you think maybe you um, zoomed your screen down? No, uh, that I don't know. So, I mean, this is, you know, when you first pull it in, switch over to Sasha. I mean, that's how big it is. Yeah, Granted, I'm on a big monitor. Yeah, not, not on, but like mine is so small, I can't even read the initial in it. You know, it's so small. And then I, I put the cursor on it and try to, you know, spread it out and it won't spread. Yeah, huh. the arrow comes on it like that, but it will not pull it open. Do you want to share your screen with me, Pete, so I can see? I don't have it up. Right oh, now. that's all right. We'll do it later. Yeah. Um, that's weird. I don't, I don't know, honey. I haven't seen, that's something I haven't seen happen. Uh, me either. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I could think is maybe your Zoom, like if I made my window little. But even then, it doesn't really. No, it, it's on a full-size screen, but it just, it's so small, I can't see it. <laughs> and I'm sure Stephen or somebody's going to say something about it when I start to submit them like that. <laughs> yeah. I'll take a look at it. I've got one-on-ones behind this all day, but I'll, um, if you want to shoot me a text for the opportunity you're talking about, yeah, um, I'll pull it up from the market center side and see if I can see it. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. What else guys? All for me. Feeling good. Is it helpful? Yeah. I know it's, it's extra stuff. But it's extra steps, but when once you've done them, it's not hard anymore, right? I mean, it's just like when we learned how to do everything the first time in real estate, right? Um, I had to learn how to do zip forms into DocuSign to ease signature. Then I came to KW and had to learn how to use dot loop. Then dot loop changed over to DocuSign rooms. So every time we get a new piece of technology, just got a new phone, it takes some getting used to. But then once we've done it, we just do it without thinking about it, right? So I'm practicing with doing this on my phone so that those who want to learn it, that I'm, you know, not fumbling through it. Because just like anybody else, I have to learn how to do it the first time. Right. Monica, can I ask you a quick question? Please. It doesn't really have to do with this class, but okay. um, you, I was still looking into taking a class on smart plans and you had to change it from Monday's date. Do you have a new date in I mind? It's going to be in February because I already had this month booked. Okay. But if you're on my agent site and you go to my tech training calendar, and plus I have launch week, right? 
at the end yes. of the month, launch week day two is contacts and smart plans. Perfect. I will be there. Okay. And then also on February one, I'm teaching the higher level smart plan because this smart plan for launch week is for new agents. So it's like an overview of it. And then February one will be more like in depth. Okay, so I probably need the basic first and then <laughs> that sounds good. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And all my classes are in the same spot, y'all. So there's never any confusion. It's always the same link. Perfect. All right, that it. Thank you guys. Thanks, Thanks Monica. Monica. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.